Hello developers. Today, we're diving into something mind-blowing. We make an image stay fixed while the content scrolls over it and still apply a dynamic mask that changes with the scroll. We'll uncover how the parallax works under the hood, why clip path is the real hero here, and how we maintain perfect responsiveness across all screen sizes. Imagine creating a stunning parallax scrolling effect where images and videos move at different speeds, giving your website a smooth cinematic feel. Sounds complex, right? But here's the twist. We've done it with just HTML and CSS. No complicated JavaScript. It feels like magic, but it's all about understanding how to combine fixed positioning, clip path tricks, and CSS animations in a unique way. In this video, we'll break down every piece of the puzzle, starting from the HTML structure, revealing the hidden secrets behind the CSS styling, and explaining the advanced properties that make everything come to life. And trust me, once you understand this logic, you can apply it to any creative project. We've created a similar project before using ClipPath. The link to that explained video is in the description, so you can check it out after this one. But here's a question. How does the image stay fixed while the rest of the page scrolls smoothly? And how do we keep everything responsive without using JavaScript? Stick around, the answer might surprise you. Before we dive in, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the algorithm recommend this tutorial to others and allows me to keep making more in-depth UI tutorials for you. So, are you ready to unlock these secrets and elevate your web design skills? Let's get started. Let's break down the HTML structure powering this amazing parallax effect. At the top, we have the page wrapper, the outermost container that holds the entire layout. Inside, the main content lives in a section main block. This section is wrapped by section main grid, which organizes everything into a flexible grid layout. First, there's the hero text container. It holds a bold heading with the text India, making an immediate visual impact. Right below, there's a marquee wrapper. Inside it, the marquee contains multiple marquee text blocks, each representing a scrolling phrase like cultural diversity and geographical variety. This repeated content is the secret behind the smooth looping animation. Next comes the main visual content inside Padding Global, which ensures consistent spacing. Within it, the container large manages the maximum width, keeping our layout responsive. The core layout is handled by Section Grid. This grid holds all major sections, each wrapped in a section with unique identifiers like is one, is minus two, and is minus three for precise styling. The first section has a small ornament with the text scroll down, a subtle guide for users. Inside the section mask container, we place a video wrapped in an image ratio container. This setup ensures the video stays responsive while delivering the parallax effect. The second section follows the same structure but highlights a different video and adds a caption inviting users to explore India's forests. A bold headline sits at the center with the text land of diversity and wonders this acts as a striking focal point. Below, there's a section data container showcasing key statistics, like 1,600 plus cultures and 80 plus national parks, each styled using the section data item class. The third section continues the pattern, featuring a vibrant festival video with a descriptive caption. At the bottom, a button wrapper holds a call to action button that links to the Incredible India website, encouraging further exploration. We also add a small footer section with a dark background for a clean finishing touch. Together, this structure combines fixed videos, mask animations, and dynamic scrolling, creating a visually stunning parallax experience. But here's a question. How do we keep these video masks perfectly synced with the scroll while maintaining responsiveness? The answer lies in the CSS magic, which we'll uncover next. Let's break down the CSS from top to bottom focusing on the most important properties that bring this magic to life. And if you want to master more advanced CSS techniques, check the related videos linked in the description. We begin with a universal reset. The asterisk selector targets every element on the page, and we set padding, margin, and box sizing. Next, the body selector. We set the text color to black and define a clean, modern font stack. The font size is one rem, ensuring scalable text based on the user's settings. For headings, we apply a bold, large font size of 4M with a tighter line height for better visual impact. And paragraphs, simple. 
we only remove the bottom margin to avoid unwanted spacing. The image selector applies a max width of 100%, making images responsive. Now, let's talk about utility classes, reusable styles that make development faster. Padding small applies one rem of padding, while padding global adds larger left and right padding for consistent page spacing. And padding section small, it controls vertical spacing with three rem on both the top and bottom. The container large class is a crucial layout helper. It centers content by using auto margins while limiting the maximum width to 80 rem, keeping things clean and aligned. The text align center class, well, it does exactly what you'd expect, centers text horizontally. Let's break down the stylish button. We start with a white text color and uppercase transformation for a bold look. The background is a warm orange tone enhanced by a fully rounded border radius. Then, we use Flexbox with Justify Content and Align Items set to center. Keeping the content perfectly aligned, what about the hover effect? We change the background to a darker shade, creating a smooth transition using Cubic Bezier for a polished touch. Now, the fun begins with the section grid. We're using the CSS grid system, defining three equal columns with grid template columns. The Justify Items property aligns content horizontally while grid gaps provide consistent spacing between items. Look at the ornament class. This decorative element uses absolute positioning, anchoring it precisely with the top and right properties. The border radius makes it a perfect circle, and by increasing the Z index, we layer it above other content. And here's a neat trick. We add a section mask container with a C-clip path property, creating complex, rounded shapes. This adds depth and a unique design flair. One of the coolest tricks lies in the section image container. We set its position to fixed, locking it in place while other content scrolls. This creates the core of our parallax effect by combining justify content and special modifiers like is right or is center. We control the image alignment flexibly. And finally, the smooth scrolling marquee. We achieve this effect by using CSS keyframes. The animation moves the element horizontally using translate text cycling infinitely with a linear motion curve. This keeps the animation continuous and seamless. We didn't stop there. Responsive styles ensure the layout adapts beautifully across different screen sizes. Using media queries, we adjust grid areas, font sizes, and element positioning for screens ranging from desktops to smaller devices. CSS Grid is a layout system that allows you to create complex web page designs by dividing the page into rows and columns. You can position items precisely using grid area, row, and column numbers. Think of your web page as a table with rows and columns. CSS Grid lets you control where each section goes on that table. Section class with is one class means this section is placed in the first row and spans across three columns from column one to column four. The Justify Self Center property horizontally centers the content inside its grid area. The section class with is three class means the section is located in the third row, occupying only the first column. It does not stretch across multiple columns, just stays within that specific grid cell. Section content headline, this section is positioned in the second row, starting from column one and ending at column three. The align self, center property vertically centers it. The justify self end property moves the content to the right edge of its grid area. Section data container, this section is also in the third row, but it starts from column two and goes to column four. It covers two columns horizontally. Section dot is two. This section is placed in the second row and is located in column three. The align self stretch property makes the content stretch vertically to fill the entire grid cell height. The grid area property uses four values. Start row, where the section starts vertically. Start column, where the section starts horizontally. End row, where the section ends vertically. End column, where the section ends horizontally. This lets you place and size sections easily within a grid layout. And there you have it. I will also provide you with the source code for this layout so you can dive deeper and understand it better. 
Check out the link in the description to explore the complete code and experiment with it yourself. Understanding CSS Grid becomes much easier when you can see and play around with the actual code. You can also animate these titles and text. We have created a separate video explaining text animations, and I'll give you the link in the description. Talking about this UI, this was a complete breakdown of the stunning parallax effect powered entirely by CSS. With CSS Grid, you have full control over how your layout behaves across different screen sizes. And when you combine it with animations, you can create stunning interactive designs that truly stand out. If you found this tutorial helpful, subscribe to the channel for more CSS tips, and see you in the next video.